Okay, uh, this is the third video. Uh, I hope uh, I'm not going too fast for the first video. I, I know, uh, to be honest, I haven't prepared very well for this, but uh, I came across the software. I was trying to uh, unclutter my PC, and I came through this, and I said, hey, I should make a, make a video about the software. I know uh, there are a lot of students struggling in drawing sheer and bending moment diagrams, and uh, when I discovered this, it it helped me a lot in understanding how the beam behaves. Uh, if I keep changing the location of the point loads, and how if if I keep changing the shape of the distributed load, and of course uh, you can do uh, beams that have so many supports, uh, and uh, it's not it's not only uh, for uh, determinate beams. It's it can be used for indeterminate beams as well. But let's take a look at uh, the example we have in our hands here. Uh, it's a cantilever beam, and uh, it's saying determine the, slo the slope, the slope at B, and the maximum deflection of the beam. Take E equals 29 exponential 3, or t 29 times 10 to the 3 ksi. I is 500 inch to the fourth power. Uh, okay, two points, two major points. The first one is at point B determine the slope at point B. So if, if you know the theory behind it, you can go and do the uh, solution by hand, basically. But the vague or the unclear point is find the maximum deflection. So you should know something about deflections. You should, you should have a feeling about beams. Uh, in a cantilever beam, whatever the load is, uh, if it's a simple load, I mean just like this one, usually the maximum deflection happens at the other end or at the tip where the, uh, I mean point C, for, uh, in our case. So uh, if I was the one who was writing this question, I would say determine the slope at B and the uh, deflection at point C, basically. Uh, then uh, probably in, uh, another question I would, I would ask, uh, uh, did you expect the deflection do you expect the exp uh, the um, the deflection at point uh, B greater than point C or not? And uh, s just tell me why. Anyways, let's just go ahead and try to d do this problem. Let me switch to the one beam window. Okay, a description again. And I know, I know, probably a lot of you guys are hating this by now, but let's do it. Let's say it's example three. Okay, we're done. Now, units add. Since we do have some information about the E and the I, and they are in English units, so we'll choose English, basically. Properties add. It's a cantilever beam, so it, and uh, the E and the I are not changing, so from zero all the way. OK, we notice that there, there is a KSI. And uh, the question says 29 times 10 to the 3, which is basically 29 and 3 zeros. And the I is an inches to the 4, I believe, was it 500? Let me double check. Yes, it is 500. Okay, what if you are giving the shape or uh, the cross-section dimension? We're not giving the I. Okay, you can uh, go through a reference or a book and find the formula for calculating I. Or you can use the calculator uh, embedded within this program, which is right here. If you have a rectangular section, all you have to do is input the B and the uh, H, and it will do the BH cube over 12, and uh, rectangular edge, uh, it's a pipe, uh, solid circle, triangular, uh, this thing, a trapezoidal tube, and you just hit calculate, and it will just give you the number, and you can use these numbers in your uh, calculation. But since we are giving the I, it's 500 and the E is 29,000. Let's hit OK. Do we have any moment releases? No. Supports. Now comes the tricky part. How do you add the support right here? So at zero, what do you have? You have zero displacement and zero rotation. Why? Because if you do zero and zero as given right here, you'll basically tell, you are basically telling the program I have a fixed end. And if you don't include this zero, that means you're having a pen, but or a hinge. But if I click OK, nothing happens on the screen. You can see there is no beam here. 
a trick behind this or another way behind this what you defined in the properties right here you said at x equals to 0 all the way to the end but you did not specify the end of the beam so what we can do we can go to the properties and add at the end of the beam okay what is the length of the beam the beam is 12 feet okay so at 12 I still have 29,000 and 500 and here you go so if you don't see the beam especially in cantilever cases and if the cantilever was on the left hand side okay if you don't see the the beam what you need to do is to specify the properties of the beam at the beginning and the end of the beam okay point loads do we have any point loads exactly we do have a point load 15k at the middle so point load add at 15 no at 6 the point load is minus 15 kips okay so we hit okay and this is the moment diagram is already there it's already working so the reactions are 15 and the moment is 90 and if I want to see the shear diagram it's like this the moment diagram is like that and you can if, if you keep this data tab open and you can get the moment at any distance you want you see the numbers are changing okay now what about rotation this is the rotation what about deflection this is the deflection right here if you want the deflection at any other okay let's if I ask you to find the deflection at B okay deflection B is at 6 so you move your cursor or the mouse to 6 if you can get 6 exactly that's yeah so it's negative 0 0.1287 at point B but here it's 0.321766 inches okay uh, let's look at the solution for this problem hopefully we've done it right okay so uh, the rotation is 2.68 times 10 to the negative 3 okay so let's see our rotation 268 you see 268 here and 268 here and 10 to the minus 3 meaning you're gonna move this and you add two zeros to the left so yeah it's correct and for the deflection it's negative 0.3217 negative 0.3217 is rounded up to 2 okay so that's the third one and uh, what I'm gonna add to this video is what if you wanna uh, print some out uh, some a report basically what you do is you go to print preview and this is what you have the first page you'll have the description you'll have the units the properties basically this is our input file if you hit next page you will have a summary of all the graphs you can get the reactions shear moment rotation and radians deflection and inches okay next page analysis data beam length is 12 uh, the number of nodes and number of elements this is for uh, because the program the the uh, uh, the engine uses the power of finite element in solving the uh, uh, beam so it's th th these data are for just analysis you don't really need to know how many elements or nodes okay uh, it gives you it gives you minimum and maximum values it's minimum shear maximum shear minimum moment maximum moment and uh, of course it gives you the minimum shear and it's located at this maximum shear and located at this and it does the same for rotation and deflection so uh, these are the three pages you can print out okay let me close this and let me go to 
file print options okay I can print the input I can just print the diagrams if I do this and hit OK and go to print preview I don't have a second page this is the page maybe you want to turn in this okay but let me do the whole package print options summary details input and in details you can specify uh, basically what the program will do is gonna divide the beam into points and will give you all the information uh, the shear, the moment, the rotation and the deflection at each point so if you want 25 points only okay let's try 25 first hit OK uh, print preview this is, doesn't, doesn't change we already seen this this is the new thing so it will divide it into 25 points distance X EI is this shear is this moment is this Rea uh, rotation is this, displacement is this. At point zero, the displacement is this. Uh, if, let's say you are interested in uh, a point which is between 57 and uh, 63. You have two options. You can interpolate between the points and uh, let's say you, want, you wanted to know the moment between these two points. Or what you can do, you can close this and you can go to file and print options and you increase it to probably 200 points and you go to file print preview and you go all the way see how many points now we have we have four pages of points just four pages of data points and uh, the increments let's see at the, let's look at the increment here you can tell how big the increment is from the first page so it's going 0 0.720 so basically at each 0.72 uh, inch it's giving you a value for the shear the moment the rotation and the displacement okay uh, this is the end of the mini series and uh, you can see uh, the program is very nice and uh, not, not to be honest not that powerful for some for one one uh, ex for one quick example okay if I go to open and uh, you can see how okay well, this is a very complicated beam look at this one nice uh, thank you I'll not save this one look at this imagine if you're gonna do this beam by hand it's gonna take you a while to do but reactions yes shear yes moments yes rotation yes deflection yeah you can get all of them and you can see springs here and I didn't want to go through the details of how, how you input the springs because it all depends on your uh, problem given uh, one one really really important uh, uh, I would say I'm trying to find the word for it uh, weakness yes weakness is how do you deal with inclined loads uh, let me just quickly tell you what do I mean by inclined loads so if, let's say you have a beam something like this I mean it's not that important I mean there are a couple of softwares to do this but what if you have a load that goes like this 10 K and the angle here is theta equals 45 degrees for example oh one can say oh it's easy you can do this and at that point I can specify a component like this basically I'm resolving this into these two components I would say very nice okay but now this will affect the shear and bending moment diagrams yes this will affect the reaction if you have a reaction like this and this but the problem is I mean it's not a problem to resolve these it's very easy to to resolve these but 
if you include only this, you're assuming that this doesn't exist. It might work this way. To be honest, I haven't tried it. But during my professional life, during my uh, studies, whenever I have a, a beam with inclined loads, <laughs> I believe the problem is easy to do by hand. It's just one more step. But in my professional lives, I, I never dealt with the uh, inclined loads like that. Uh, again, there are, uh, it's a very simple program. It, u it utilizes the power of finite element. And uh, it's just for you guys to double check on your homework assignments. Uh, to double check on the examples done in class. Maybe your uh, professor made a mistake. Maybe you are not getting why is it, uh, why is it I'm getting this value, not getting this value and all the, all my uh, classmates are getting the correct value what's wrong maybe you can get uh, maybe you'll understand by just moving the loads along uh, changing the uh, value of the loads maybe you'll understand how the beam behaves at least that that's how i i understood it besides reading all the textbooks i had in my hand at that time okay uh, that concludes it uh, i hope you enjoyed it and thank you for uh, stopping by